Hello, welcome to Saturday Story Time. My name is Denise Roussel, your guide to creating a new life. And I want to tell you several stories today that are about facing my fears. And before I do that, I want to remind you today is February 29th. It's leap year. And it's a wonderful time for us to leap into new ways of being. And so my intention in sharing this story with you, or these stories with you, is to assist you in your journey to leap into a new way of being that's exciting and joyful. So I'm going to start off with my journey and how it began, actually, what sparked my experience with fear and facing my fear. In October 2014, I received a phone call from the Harris County Examiner's Office, Medical Examiner's Office, informing me that my son Corey had died. And all I could do was say, oh my God, oh my God. It was horrible. I was sucker punched. It's one of the most traumatic things that someone can experience. But I realized that along with the trauma of my worst nightmare coming to pass, I also experienced a powerful awakening and I realized that Corey and I had been working together for many lifetimes and it was as if he was saying I'm finished now and I'm going to the other side where I can be of more service and so he began very early on sending me messages and appearing to me and coming to me in his first Five days after he passed, he appeared to me in a dream and he had a big snake coiled around his arm and the snake had its fangs bared. And I asked him, is it poisonous? And he said, no. And the implication was, it's not going to kill you. And he put the snake right in my face and I screamed, no, Corey. And I woke up crying. And I knew exactly what he was telling me. He was telling me, I need you to face your fears, mom, because you have a big job ahead of you. And it's gonna require a lot of courage. From that day forward, that's what I began to do, is to face my fears, allow, and open. Just to give you the backstory, I had lived a very safe, risk free life up until that point. I was afraid of everything, worried about everything, tried to control everything. And I didn't come here to live a safe, risk free life. And meanwhile, Corey was this crazy man. He was doing all kinds of crazy stuff, risky stuff constantly putting himself in harm's way and facing his fears. And I realized after the fact, the reason why he was doing that is because he knew that if he brought those fears up, that he would be able to work with them and garner the courage that he needed to do the things that he did in his 27 years of life, which he experienced more in 27 years than most of us would in 72. So this began my journey with facing my fears and examining what's here now. What am I healing? So I, I responded to grief in a way that's different than from most people and I began to reach out in, in meaningful connection I, I work with a lot of homeless people and I, I just began to explore what it was to face my fears. 
So one of the things that I realized on my journey is that fear was not out there. It was a part of me. And I had, I treated them like little girls. All these parts of me, fear of being abandoned, fear of being rejected, fear of being not enough, all sorts of fears. Fear of being controlled. Oh, that's a big one. Fear of being powerless. And so I just began to, to learn how to work with these parts of myself. And I began to learn how to be present with them. And then I learned how to start loving and accepting these parts of myself, which is not an easy thing to do when we're trained our entire lives to push them away, ignore them, and fight them. So, along the way, I uh, wrote several books, and one of them is, the first one was this book, Beyond This Space, My Son Corey's Story, and How He Changed My Life. And in order, before I tell you this next story, that as a reflection of some of the things that were happening in me as a result of facing my fears, I want to share with you a dream that Corey had. And I'm going to read from this book. And it says, This reminds me of a vivid dream I had during my retreat at Black Mountain two days ago, in which a playful friend embraced me in jest, only to morph in a grotesque, fanged, flesh-hungry demon, head pressed against my neck. His skin was fair and his eyes marked with wisdom, but his facial features protruded in ridges that revealed the most violent movements. That were his purpose. In that instant, there was no fear. And I reached out and caressed his face and neck. For as a friend, I enjoyed his company. But as a mortal enemy, I could only deeply love. My friends, that is our journey to learn how to love our fears, which I want to share with you through my journey. I realized that fear has a very special place. And so I want to tell you another story. And it's the story of Beauty and the Beast. Many of you know it. The Beast is the prince in disguise as the beast and he's waiting for the kiss of unconditional love to set him free and Belle cannot know that he's the prince she must love him as the beast and when she kisses him poof, he morphs into the prince and what was shown to me on my journey of learning to face my fears. That fear, and I'm just gonna put all of our stuff into that one word, fear. Fear is the beast. It is actually love in disguise as the beast, waiting to be recognized, loved and accepted. And when we offer it, our love and acceptance, poof, the fear morphs back into love. My sadness is actually joy in disguise. And when I learn to love that and accept that, poof, it morphs back into joy. Which, by the way, I experience ecstatic joy as my natural state. It is our natural state to be ecstatically joyful. My anger is my passion and my power. And when I learn to offer it love and acceptance, poof, it turns back into my passion and power. My anxiety is my excitement for life. And my peace 
And when I offer it my love and accept it, poof, it moves back into my peace and my excitement for life. It's been amazing, this journey. So meanwhile, um, I have done a lot of different kinds of events, and I, one day, a couple of years ago, I decided to do this free hugs event in downtown Austin. And I had a friend named Ed following with me, so I had my little free hugs um, sign on my shirt, and we were at the corner of 6th and Congress. We had come down and we were getting ready to walk around to give out free hugs. And we were at a traffic light and this homeless guy, this African homeless guy, there were a lot of people around, but this homeless guy is crossing the street and he made a beeline to me. And you could tell that he had been on something because he was kind of had this crazed red eye look. And he looked at me and he said, where is God? And I looked at him and I saw him. I saw him as an infinitely worthy soul that was in a lot of and he started screaming, where is God? And I held out my arms. And he just continued to rant. Then he started circling around me. And then he started getting a little closer. And I just kept looking at him. I had absolutely no fear. I just could see him and I locked eyes with him and he got closer and closer and he's ranting the whole time and he put his head right close to mine. I don't know if they touched, but he said, if you're God, he started doing this with my hair. What is the composition of this hair? How many strands is this? And he just kept on and on. And I was looking at it square in the eyes. And I finally put his head in my hands. And I said, you are loved. You are loved. And he started crying. Big tears started rolling down his face. And he backed up a little, and I put my hand on his heart, and I said, it's okay, it's okay, you are loved. He calmed down a little bit, he still was talking, he circled around me a couple of times, and then he ambled off. Meanwhile, my friend Ed was standing next to me the entire time, and he said, are you okay? And I said, yes, absolutely. That man just needed some love, and he knew exactly where to go to find it. <sighs> this is the power of love. This is power of loving, facing our fears, and loving and accepting our fears. So time goes on, and I just continue to learn how to love all of these parts of me. And I continue to learn how to love and accept other people's experiences and fears because I recognize that we are one. And I continue to allow face my fears, allow, open to this love that we are. So, uh, I have a lot of dreams and Source is continually showing me things and giving me experiences. So, 
one of the things that I know is that this journey that I'm on is constantly uncovering all these layers and layers of fear through my experiences. Why? So that I can face them and learn how to love and accept them. So I had a really powerful experience with this in a dream. This happened several months ago. And I was sleeping and in the dream, I was like at a gas station. And uh, just to let you know, the fear that I was working with is the fear of a sexual predator, a violent sexual predator. And so I was at the gas station and this person came up and he was kind of like a homeless guy. And he, and by the way, I work with hundreds and hundreds of homeless people. I have the most amazing experiences with homeless people. I've never ever had an experience where I felt in danger, or I actually was in danger. Homeless people love me because I see them as infinitely worthy souls. But this was my work I was doing with this fear of a sexual predator. And so this fear showed up as a, a fellow. And he came and he pinned me on the ground. And I immediately locked eyes with him. And I started out loud. I heard, I woke, I woke myself up, but I was still in this meditative dream state saying, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Sure enough, the man started white hair, everything. You're just like, wow. I'm like, check it out. <laughs> I just transmuted my fear into powerful love and light. And I realized that being was not part, not separate from me. It was part of me. I was just like, boom, lit up like a Christmas tree. This, my friends, is the power of love, the power of facing our fears. <sighs> it's amazing. So you may be watching this video and you may be saying, wow, I would love to be able to face my fears and to be able to love that part of me and to transform that fear back into love. But I haven't been able to do so. I've been trying, but I can't seem to even face my fears, much less love them. Well, I want you to know, it's not something that happened overnight. It's a process that I've learned on my journey. And the beautiful thing about it is, is that I've been able to share that process with others so they can transform their lives. It's beautiful. So if you're in that position and you're like, I'm really ready. I'm really ready to turn my fear into love, to change my life around, because it ain't been easy with all of this anxiety, all of this sadness, and I'm ready to make a change in my life, and I'm ready to call in an expert, somebody who's done it for themselves and showed other people how to do it to go through this beautiful process of transforming our lives, then send me a personal message and let's book a call to see if we're a match to work together and I can get you the same results I got myself and I'm getting my clients. It's your time to shine. It's your time to create something beautiful for yourself and to stop being afraid and to start loving yourself and your life. You deserve it. I love you so much.